evening class. I'm Erin Lamora, and uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about the safety of cell phone radi radiation. Uh, this type of radiation is specifically called radio frequency radiation. It's found in cordless phones, uh, television, radio, and Wi Fi. Um, a little background on this is um, on February 26, 1985, the first safety guidelines for radio frequency radiation were enacted by the U.S. Federal Communications uh, Commission to ensure that people were not exposed to any dangerous thermal effects. Um, concern over this, the possible link between brain tumors and cell phone radiation became a major public issue in 1993 when it was reported that David Reinhardt, a Sudi cell phone manufacturer, for allegedly caused, causing his wife to develop a brain tumor. But uh, this case was later rejected by the Florida U.S. Uh, District Court. Uh, my major claim is that radio frequency radiation emitted by cell phones is not associated with the increased risk of brain tumors and other health problems. Uh, I'm gonna, in this speech, I'm going to go over three different claims. My first one being that there has been no increase in brain tumor rate, rate despite the wireless industry having 377.9 uh, million wireless subscribers connections in the U.S and 307,626 towers sites across the country. Um, according to the National Cancer Institute, brain cancer rates have changed a little in the past decade, but there has been no drastic change since uh, cell phones became more common. Uh, from 2008 there through 2012, there were fewer than five brain cancer cases for every 100,000 people in the United States. My second claim is that radio, frequ radio frequency radiation is not strong enough to cause any harm. Uh, radio frequency radiation is in the low end of the electro electromagnetic <coughs> spectrum, meaning the radiation is a little low. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the electromagnetic spectrum, it's basically a way to categorize different types of radiation. At the very bottom, uh, we have where uh, cell phone radiation is. It has. Um, it has frequencies around 300 gigahertz and 3 kilohertz, and the wavelengths are between 1 millimeter. The wavelength indicates that, uh, so the lower the wavelength, the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency is, and the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency is. At the top, we have gamma rays with frequencies greater than 10 to the 19 hertz, and wavelengths, wavelengths less than 10 picometers, which is very small. Um, radio frequency is also not a non-ionizing, is non-ionizing, meaning it does not cause DNA damage that could lead to uh, cancer. Uh, my third and final claim is that countless of health organizations, such as the Food and Drug Administration, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the National Institute for Occupation Safety and Health, have all categories radiation levels emitted by phones safe. Um, before it, any type of cell phone goes out in the market, they all cell phone manufacturers have to <coughs> test their products to ensure the radiation levels meet the guidelines. These guidelines were set by the Federal Communications Commission, and they set the ma maximum amount of thermal radiation that cell phones are permitted to emit is 1.6 watts of energy per kilogram of body weight. Uh, you can actually test your phone to see how much uh, energy is emitted by actually pressing star pound zero seven pound and it'll take you to um, to the number of it. I did it to my phone and I got 1.14 and most cell phones out in the market today are as low as 1.109. To conclude, um, as we keep furthering our understanding, understanding of different types of radiations, uh, it has come more evident that Radio frequency radiation has no association with brain tumors and other types of health effects.
All right, let's start with some of the strong stuff. I thought you had uh, reasonable examples to explain the concepts in the body of the speech. There's some good statistical information. It does get a little complicated when you're trying to explain wavelengths and spectrums and frequencies. Uh, you know, that's potentially problematic, uh, but uh, the idea that there is some regulation about it and there are degrees of relative safety, I think, could be documented a little bit more effectively with some simple quotes from authorities on these particular points, and that, I think, would have solved uh, a lot of the problem that you had there, and I thought that that was the one piece of information, the one type of information that was mostly missing from your speech. There's good factual data, some good statistical information, a couple of examples, and you generally have sources on those per particular points, uh, but like I said, I think a little bit more um, expert authority would help uh, as well. Sorry. It's there, it's not coming out. All right, uh, the proposition, you do identify your proposition, but it is phrased with a negative term in it. That's a bit awkward. Uh, there's not really a preview of the speech. I thought you were gonna preview the speech, but then you went right into the supporting material on that first point. Uh, so there's not a preview, uh, but you do signpost the secondary points as you get to them. So organizationally, it's okay, but I think it would help it out a lot more if you set it up at the beginning of the speech. Uh, the generalizations are okay. Here's the one thing that I think is a little problematic about the beginning of the speech and maybe the whole underlying premise of the speech. The only reason that we're hearing this argument is that 25 years ago, somebody sued a, a cell phone manufacturer and the lawsuit was dismissed. And here you are 25 years later, kind of making the argument that says there was no grounds for this kind of lawsuit. I don't know that anybody is claiming that RD, R, R, RFR uh, is a threat um, that anybody has su suggested that it be more closely regulated, that uh, some harm is occurring, and so I'm not sure why I'm listening to this particular information. It could simply be an informative speech because there's, no, except for the one case that you cited 25 years ago, uh, I don't see much controversy on this subject, especially when you cite the information that says, you know, whatever we have, 700 and X number million. Uh, devices out there that are utilizing these resources and we haven't seen any of this kind of stuff, well then why, why is this an argument? Why do we have to hear uh, this particular information? I think uh, there's a context missing that would demonstrate that there's an argument here and uh, you need to develop that a little bit more. All right, thank you.